182 points at the closing bell, settling at a new high, along with the S&P and the NASDAQ, after the Fed did something expected, leaving a benchmark interest rate alone. But they still expect to cut rates three times this year. The central bank trying to get its timing right. Inflation has eased substantially, while the labor market has remained strong. And that is very good news. But inflation is still too high. Ongoing progress in bringing it down is not assured. And the path forward is uncertain. Fed Chair Jay Powell says they've been right to be cautious after higher than expected inflation reports recently. Again, the Dow up about 400 to 39,511. President Biden visiting an Intel facility in Arizona, announcing more than $8 billion in funding and $11 billion in loans for the company for computer chip plants. Intel will invest more than $100 billion. And this historic funding will use to build new semiconductor fab facilities and modernize modernize and expand existing ones in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico, and Oregon. The president's also campaigning in several western states, heading next to Texas. Avoiding a government shutdown this week isn't a done deal yet, even after an agreement was reached on remaining spending bills. These bills will make significant investments for the well-being of our service members, for keeping the U.S. competitive against the Chinese gov gov communist government, and more. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says a shutdown would be senseless, but there's a Friday night deadline and still no text on the bills yet. A former sheriff's deputy in Mississippi just sentenced to 40 years in prison for the racist torture of two black men last year. The longest sentence yet as six former deputies learn their fate this week after pleading guilty. America is listening to Fox News. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So, get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. A contractor in Washington state is cited for child labor violations after a teen loses his legs. Washington state's Department of Labor and Industries fines Rachi LLC, a general contractor, nearly $52,000, saying the company put seven workers who are minors in harm's way on 35 occasions, allowing them to operate heavy equipment. Previously cited for willful, serious workplace safety violations and fined over $156,000 last year when a 16-year-old worker lost both of his legs after being dragged underneath the blade of a walk-behind trencher. On its website, Rachi states safety is a core value. State officials say they immediately issued an order to suspend the company's student learner exemption, explaining there are some jobs that state law says minor workers just can't do for their own safety. Fox's Kristen Goodwin, a pilot who was found drunk before trying to fly ends up behind bars. The Delta pilot whose blood alcohol level was almost two times the aviation limit ahead of a transatlantic flight last year is sentenced to 10 months in a Scottish jail. Lawrence Russell Jr. of Georgia was stopped after a security scan found two bottles of Jägermeister, one of them half empty, in his carry-on luggage at the airport in Edinburgh, Scotland, where he was slated to captain the flight for JFK in New York. The 63-year-old was then arrested. He's had at least two previously recorded instances of driving under the influence and a Scottish official says he's now successfully completed a recovery program and is in remission. The airline says Russell is not currently a Delta employee. Lillian Wu, Fox News. Recapping the record rally on Wall Street, the Dow up 401 as the numbers settle, finishing at 39,512. The S&P closing above 5,200, up 46 points. The Nasdaq also with a record high, closing at 16,369. That's up more than 200. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News.
And good morning. It is the drive, ESPN Radio 93.5, the drive with Say and Piper, Greg Solier. He was hyped up on caffeine there going 100 miles an hour in his weather report so i'm gonna slow it back down a little bit greg if that's so cool I, i'm if that's okay i'm not hyped up on uh on mountain dew or anything right now but i am hyped up on some basketball which is about to get here the national holiday i call it the next two days thursday and friday it should be a national holiday for everyone that is a basketball fan and i'm giving you permission right now to take off work the next two days just blow off work just leave a note on your boss's desk and say Lante told me that this was a national holiday and I'm okay to leave, especially when it's an Illini basketball game tomorrow at 210. So I'm hoping everyone is making their plans to watch the game. It's on True TV. Here we go. Every year we remember what channel True TV is on. And Kyle, by the way, is with me here. Kyle Tosk. Uh, Derek Piper is going to join us, by the way at 4 30 he's going to join you at 4 30 i'm going to bail again early to head to a baseball game i apologize with piper gone so much you like <laughs> you hit your quota of work time now. Right, right right 90 minutes is your max <laughs> now i have to just bits and pieces take off so that i don't put in too much time you know because uh, i don't want to go over the union which allowed by the union for a Lante job. So, uh, no, but I am going to sneak out of here. And it's funny, man. You talk about a lot of work when the, when the week begins and you know Piper's gone and you know you have four baseball games that you want to attend for your son. I have never sat down and studied something harder to figure out how we're going to make this work. Well, Derek Piper is nice enough to join Kyle today at 430. And then, God willing, Illinois beats a team named Moorhead State out of the Ohio Valley Conference. He's going to join you again Friday at 4.30 because, alas, we have yet another baseball game Friday. Now, tomorrow, we are off. The show is not going to air tomorrow due to the start time of Illinois basketball, the 2.10 tip. And I said it, and I'm being honest, nobody's going to be hearing us if Illinois basketball is playing. And Maybe the, uh, maybe the great listeners that we have still would tune in and just watch the game while they listen, and we appreciate that thought. But we just figured let's, uh, let's take tomorrow off. Uh, Andrew's got a game at 4.30, so I'm going to escape Illinois basketball by like 20 minutes and then run to a baseball game. So that kind of worked out well for tomorrow. But, Kyle, isn't it funny? The national championship game this year is on TBS. Weird. Is it on CBS as well, or is it only on TBS? I think it's only TBS. I feel like they maybe had it on TBS a couple years ago, too, where okay. maybe it's rotating. I know it was CBS last year when it was Jim Nance's last yeah. Final Four, but, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's just kind of strange, right? And it's it's not like everybody doesn't get TBS. I mean, that that is a channel that is— I do know some people don't have True TV, though. Oh, they don't. And we already got a texter who says he doesn't have that channel. Uh-oh. Sal, so— Uh-oh, Sal, that's not good. I thought that just came on every, every T— I, I, Again, I don't even know what True TV is until— March hits, right? Yeah, and then it's like you don't oh, watch wait. Impractical Jokers. That's the only show <laughs> you know I've ever watched. I have watched that before, and that is a splendid show. That's amazing. Those guys continue to carry that on for so long. I mean, you'd think by now people would know them, right? I mean, they're always doing. Yeah. How do you how do you ever like prank anybody anymore? <laughs> they're doing these skits in New York. <laughs> it's like how you'd have to live under a rock not to know who Sal and those guys are, but uh, but they're funny, man. They they are creative with what they do. And I get a kick out of it when I see it. So there, there's that, I guess, as we roll along 
Hey, um, I saw last night, a, or I saw this morning, I guess, it was a text or a tweet with a guy wearing a shirt at the Virginia-Colorado State game that said, Virginia basketball is Iowa football. <laughs> I thought that was That was brilliant. great. I, I, I think Iowa football actually outscored Virginia last night. Virginia looked terrible. Now, you tell me Indiana State would you not tell put me up a better any team. Any team. <laughs> the, the next 20 teams out on the bubble would have made for a more fun game last night. 42 that was points. awful. 14 in the first half. They didn't score in the final nine minutes and 30 oh, seconds of the goodness. first half. I mean, what wow. in the world? I, I just – how does that team I in the tournament – I get it. They somehow won 23 games or whatever, but – yeah. What an awful, awful They offense. were even in their national championship run. They were even kind of known just for more of ball patience and defense. Right. They've always played slow, but right. at least on that team they had NBA offensive players like Correct. Kyle Guy and DeAndre Hunter. Mm-hmm. But this team just has nobody who can do anything on offense. That it is was crazy. Horrible. It was like watching a middle school team try to score. <laughs> hey, hey. I coached a couple of really good middle school And you teams. probably could have put up more exactly. than 14 I, I'm last thinking, night. So. I'm thinking my, uh, my one year that won 22 games, I'm thinking we outscore Virginia last night against Colorado State. Colorado State did look good, so they advanced to play Texas. They could beat Texas. I agree with you. I know uh, you had Virginia beating Texas in your bracket. You switching that to well, Colorado State? He, here's the deal. I forgot about this. You get either one. Right. That's so, what I'm asking. Did, were you dead set on Virginia? Or no, are you still riding Colorado no. State? Here's, here's, remember I said yesterday, I always missed the first game. Yep. So I guess technically I've already missed the first game of the tournament. Uh, but, hey, I've always I've usually done well in brackets, but we'll see. We'll see how it, wor- how it works this year. Here is the rundown of today's show. We are going to take an early break here in a second so that we can come back and run some audio. Today, the Illini – Basketball players, what, we had Marcus Damask, we had Quincy Garrier, and Coleman Hawkins. All met with the media at the NCAA tournament at the site in Omaha. Also Brad Underwood. So here's what we're doing. We're going to take a break here in a second, and we're going to be able to get some audio on from the players. I think that's important to hear what they have to say a day before opening NCAA tournament play. Then at 3.30, we're going to have uh, the play-by-play, the voice of the Moorhead State Eagles. His name is Chuck Mraz. He's going to join us at 3.30, so we'll get a chance to know a little bit more about a team that has the same record as Illinois at 26-8. and eight. In the four-hour, you and I will visit for a while. We'll take another quick break. Then we'll play some Brad Underwood audio from today. You'll hear that. And then Derek Piper is going to join you at 4.30 So we've got a lot of information on Moorhead State and Illinois as we get you set for that 210 tip-off tomorrow. Kyle, we are, I mean, by tomorrow at this time, not only will Illinois be playing, but you will have already watched probably, what, five, six games Mm -hmm. of NCAA tournament action. Tom Izzo will somehow find a way to have (laughs) one another one. Yeah, they play, what, Mississippi State? That's the first one on Thursday. Here comes the tricky part of when you're – trying to record every game because they is that what you do i do i record every game only for for ncaa fantasy purposes does that make sense yep so what happens is you have one on tbs one on true tv one on tnt and they start juggle them they juggle at different times right so sometimes you have to skip a game because it's not allowing you to tape that one uh, or record that one so it's tricky it's like listen it's work Tonight, I will get home, I will focus in on the remote, and I will try to get as well-equipped as I can to get these games ready to roll tomorrow. Of course, the Illini game will be uh, recorded for sure. I'm going to watch it, but I'll probably watch it again uh, tomorrow night just to get a better idea of what happened, et cetera. So I'm excited. How excited are you to tip it off? And is Michigan State – is that the first game? Yeah, Michigan State, Mississippi State, 11-15, kicks it off. off. Let's go. And then you got BYU-Duquesne, so you'll get a look at That's potentially great. Illinois' next opponent, assuming they get past Moorhead. I okay. think there's a couple 1-16, 2-15s mixed okay. in early tomorrow, too. There's usually always a couple of cool games, good games to watch, and then there's a couple that just kind of get out of hand pretty quick. So uh, that will be good for Illinois fans tomorrow who are itching to watch this and, and learn more about an opponent a future opponent in Duquesne and also in, uh, of course, 
BYU. So that will be BYU out of the Big 12, which is so weird. Is Duquesne, are they out of like the Colonial? They're the Atlantic 10. Or Atlantic 10. Okay. All right. I was looking through so many teams today that I forget which conference each one is in. Uh, the Michigan State, Michigan, uh, Mississippi State game should be pretty good. It's funny, like 11 o'clock will roll around tomorrow, and the next 15 minutes will be the longest 15 minutes of your yeah. life. Yeah. Because you'll be watching, you know, the, the, you'll be watching the pregame, and it's like, oh, just get to and the For games. some reason, like, Charles Barkley and Shaq are there breaking down <laughs> Michigan State. They've never watched a game all season. It's the same. Because that makes a lot of sense. It's the same stuff we deal with every year with this. And then usually that first game, you've got to sit through a couple of commercial right. breaks before the second game begins. So early on tomorrow, you'll get an idea of what four commercials you're going to see Five million times over the next four days. So uh, yeah. you don't even have to keep track that first uh, that first commercial break because you're going to see that same commercial a million times. Ian Eagle is now the main guy for the tournament, of course, replacing Jim Nance. Are you excited about Ian Eagle? I think Ian does a good job. He did the Big Ten yeah. championship. It's as good of a replacement as they could have had for Agreed. Jim Nance, in my opinion. I think Ian's great. Just called the Big Ten tournament. So yep. That crew that did the semifinal and final will be doing the final four, and I think they're awesome. Bill Raftery, Grant Hill. And uh, I, I like I, some of Ian Eagle stuff. I what too. He, whatever he said after Shannon hit that big three there late, I had it in the <laughs> intro the other day. I can't remember, but it's just I, I, I really do like him. He, he, he has some excitement to him, and I mm-hmm. like that. Um, and, of course, Grant Hill is very, very oh, calm. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what he said. He's very calm uh, with Grant Hill. And then, of course, Raftery. Now, Bill used to come out and just be like, and Illinois, you know, he'd do that. But now he's like, he's like, Illinois, Bill Raftery, I'm not a man, man, Ian Eagle, or so he's throwing in extra stuff. I'm like, whoa, you're like, you're going a little bit overboard here, Bill. But uh, Raftery is great. Yeah, that's a good crew. And uh, I'm hoping that Illinois has some games where those guys are doing it because those are in pretty important games. Get to Phoenix words. and uh, is that what it, you know, for sure you get, get them there. Get to Phoenix and there, there you go. <laughs> I'm not sure who's on the call for Illinois tomorrow with their game against Warren State. I did State. see it, but I don't remember who. Ah, must not stand out to you, so that's scary. All right, 359-2255. Again, we are going to take a break right now. When we come back, you'll hear some audio from the uh, Illinois players today, so that'll be something to get you ready for that. But before then, let's do a little work. Busey's Money Manager, part of the online and mobile e-banking platforms, is a powerful tool that allows you to visualize and better understand finances, your finances, through a variety of features. This is pretty cool. Cash flow. Money Manager provides a visual visualization of spending and income trends, allowing you to manage your finances on a daily to 90-day view. You can create a customized budget, a variety of customizable Views means your budget is easy to create, visualize, and control, and then track your net worth. The retirement planning and overall wealth management in one place allows you to track your net worth. This feature allows you to visualize all your assets in one place and track net worth over a monthly to yearly view. At Busey, they are proud to offer convenient digital banking platforms that enhance their customers' user experience always a step beyond. Visit Busey.com to get started today. Busey, member FDIC. Are you tired of shivering in the winter? Look no further than your local heroes at ABC Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, this is Gina inviting you to give us a call at 217-352-5400 to book your appointment to make sure your furnace is run safely and efficiently this winter. We've been proudly locally owned and operated and have been serving our community for over 50 years. ABC, always be comfortable. Call me 217-352-5400 to book your appointment today or go to abcheatingandac.com. Since Busey Bank first opened our doors in 1868, we have built upon a tradition of close relationships and broad financial capabilities. Our experienced team provides the highest level of personalized service to ensure we accomplish your goals, simplifying your wealth management and business lending needs, and ensuring a legacy for generations. Building business, growing wealth since 1868. Proud to be the official bank of the Fighting Illini. Member FDIC. Mom, she won't stop touching me. Broccoli stinks. Guys, no phones at the table. Family dinner time? Not easy. But you know what is easy? 
OSF On-Call Urgent Care. When you need convenient, affordable care for minor illnesses and injuries, you need OSF On-Call Urgent Care. Be seen in person or connect 24-7 online when and where you need it. Learn more at osfoncall.org slash urgent care. In an ever-changing real estate market, it is so important to work with experienced agents like Russ and Nick Taylor with the Taylor teams at Taylor Realty Associates. They have the knowledge and expertise to get your home sold for the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time. Trust the experience and success of Russ and Nick Taylor with the Taylor team at Taylor Realty Associates. Give them a call today at 217-355-0700 or visit them online at taylorboys.com. That's taylorboys.com. It is The Drive, ESPN Radio 93.5. Don't forget, coming up, bottom of the hour, Chuck Mraz, the voice of the Moorhead State Eagles, will join us. We'll hear some more about Moorhead State and what they have to offer in this game with Illinois tomorrow. Today, the media had a chance to talk to both Brad Underwood and some Illini players. Here is some sound of the Illini players, including Coleman Hawkins, Marcus Damask, and Quincy Garrier. Marcus, I know first time in the NCAA tournament, part of the reason you wanted to come here was to play in this. What's it mean to get here and what's it been like to be here? Yeah, uh, it's exciting. You know, obviously I came to Illinois to to play in, in big games in March and we got, we're got we here and we got a chance to win big games. So it's exciting and, and we're just focused on getting a win. Follow up? Yes. Quincy, kind of a similar question. I know you want to get back to the NCAA tournament. What's led you guys to this point, and what's it mean to get back here? All right, it feels great. Um, like you just said, last time I came came here was uh, my sophomore year. Um, really just grateful for the opportunity, and uh, we're ready to roll for tomorrow. Cole, when I remember talking to you last year after the loss in Des Moines, and you said a lot of these guys want to come back this year to get to this point. How important was that? And then to kind of see it solidified with what you get, you guys have been able to do this year. Um, it's just been good to see our growth. Um, we've been able to put some things behind us, and uh, you know the guys who wanted to stay have stayed, and we've grown. Uh, we've gotten better. We've gotten more mature. Uh, and I think we're really uh, we're ready to take on any challenge that that comes our way. I think uh, the difference between this year and last year is uh, we got guys that you know are grateful to be here, and guys that really want to be here. Uh, and we're we're only focused on winning, so uh, that's our goal to go into this tournament and and, and uh, whoever we face every night go out and try to win. So. Question right here in the aisle. Thank you. Thank you. Coleman, hi. Uh, just want to pick up on what you just said. Um, what was it like last year, and and how much did what you allude to about how much people wanted to be with the Illini or not, you know, play into how it ended? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think last year was kind of embarrassing for me. Uh, first round exit. Um, uh, it's definitely a game I felt like was winnable for us. But we just didn't compete hard. Um, felt like some of the guys gave up, but um, I feel like we got a really good team this year that's, you know, ready to face any, any challenge, take on any challenge, and um, we're ready to compete. Um, I feel like the difference between this team and, and last year's team is um, no one's ready to go home. You know, we're ready to keep playing. Um, and I'm excited to see what we do this March. Yeah, uh, Coleman or any of you guys, really. Uh, you missed Terrence for a few games in the, early in the season. You got through that. Uh, how much, how difficult was that? And uh, how do you think he's handling this? Obviously, we can't talk to him, but how is he handling this whole situation, being in the spotlight and what he means to this uh, team? Marcus and Quincy, in that order, please. Um. Yeah, uh, missing Terrence was tough for our team. You know, he's such a big part of what we do. But I think it kind of gave all of us a chance to, you know, do a little more. And we all got more confidence because we had to adapt our roles. 
And uh, as far as Terrence, you know, I think he's he's doing well. You know, he's focused on basketball. He's focused on trying to get a win. And I think that's just what we're all here. We're all just focused on trying to get a win. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like Marcus just said, uh, Terrence is really grateful to be back with us. Uh, he's been tremendous for us, and uh, he's just ready to win. Everybody's locked in. Uh, we know why we're here, and uh, we'll be ready to roll tomorrow. We're right here, and then Dawn right and back. Coleman, just following up, just what, what gives you confidence in, in this team entering this tournament? Uh, I feel like offensively we have guys who can score and create. Uh, I feel like um, we reached into a, uh, another another example of our defense when we started to uh, switch in that Nebraska game, and we did a little bit in the Wisconsin game. And uh, I feel like we're able to grow in certain areas when the timing is right. Um, and I feel like we can adjust well to those changes. So um, I think it was pretty evident to uh, – you know, what happened in the Big Ten tournament, but um, I feel like there's a whole other level that we can tap into as well. Um, I don't think I played very good in the tournament. I thought I could have been a lot better. Um, I, I feel like there is there are spots where we could have played a lot better, and um, I think this tournament, you know, uh, gives us a chance to clean those things up and go out and compete hard. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, I just feel confident in everything that we do. Uh, I trust in all the work that we've done. Uh, and like we said all year, this team is really connected. So, For any of you, uh, winning the Big Ten ch tournament is great, but you had to do it coming from behind in every game double digits. You started well. How important is it to sustain throughout the 40 minutes and not have those laws where you have to fight back and, and hopefully win it at the end? Quincy, then Marcus, please. Uh, I mean, it just shows uh, how connected we are. Uh, you know, every game in March is going to be similar to what we've been facing uh, in the tournament. Uh, we just got to stay together, connected, and uh, we're really a mature team. Uh, everybody's old, uh, you know, and the fact that we're connected, uh, I don't think it will matter. We just have to obviously clean some stuff up, like Coleman said, uh, but we'll be ready. Yeah, um, you know, obviously we don't like to get down double digits, but I think if there's one thing about this team is just we're going to keep fighting, you know, no matter how we start, no matter what the, the middle looks like, at the end we're going to fight. Uh, so just our ability to, to come together during timeouts and, and continue to, to push through no matter what's going on, I think that's what this team has and that's what could could give us some wins here. This is for Quincy and, and Coleman. Um, they're kind of different questions for each, but both in regard to the fans. Quincy, you, you're Oregon, Syracuse, I'm sure engaged fan bases. I'm thinking maybe Syracuse, you know, more impatient or something like that. How are Illinois fans, you know, in, in, in your experience in a year, Different? Are they are they even more amped up? Are they into the and, and for Coleman, um, you've had the whole gamut of experience with these fans, and you know they have high expectations of you. Sometimes they, from my view, are, are hard on you, and I want to know what that's like for you, Quincy. Uh, yeah, you know, Quincy, yeah. go ahead and start uh, that. Uh, our friends been great all year long. I mean, in my experience, um, like you just said, I, I went to Oregon. In Syracuse, the fan base was different, but here I really feel like uh, they're supporting us a lot. Um, we have probably the best fans in the country, so uh, that's 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 my response for your answer to the question. Uh, me personally, I've uh, I feel like I've dealt with the ups and downs of being on the good side and bad side of fans, but I feel like. Uh, if, if any fan has anything negative to say about us, I mean, can they really call themselves a fan? Um, I feel like they're more of a spectator of Illinois basketball. Uh, I feel like the real fans support us um, despite of whatever opinions they have. Um, I feel like we have a really strong fan base that really does care about us, uh, who really supports us. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've been on both sides of, you know, whether they're, they're fans or not, I've been both on both sides of positive and negative things. And I think the biggest thing is to not let 
either positive or negative things go to your head because you might think too highly of yourself and then as soon as you have a bad game they turn on you but uh, I think the real fans are great the ones that support us they're uh, they're a special group for sure uh, and uh, when when they're loving and supporting there's uh, there's nobody like it in the country so I really appreciate all of them this is Eric Boland with Provident Financial Group unfortunately there is no one-size-fits-all retirement plan Finding the right plan for you depends on many factors. The good news is we can help improve your retirement readiness, whatever your situation. Contact us today at 217-366-3456 or find us online at ProvidentFinancialGroupLLC.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network, member FINRA, SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Illini fans, this year we celebrate the 100th anniversary of Memorial Stadium for the 2024 Fighting Illini football season. Season tickets for the 2024 football season are on sale now. And Illini fans who renew their season tickets by February 1st are eligible to win amazing prizes, memorabilia, and experiences. Secure your season tickets for homecoming, Dad's Day, and a special rededication of Memorial Stadium on October 19th against Michigan. Visit FightingIllini.com for more information. Kelsey Furniture in downtown Tuscola sells Tempur-Pedic beds. What's it like? I'm going to tell you right now, Stevie, that that thing is the best thing I've ever slept on in my life. My wife and I both have said we've never had better night's sleep. And the people at Kelsey's were fantastic. Brian is the guy that helped us. You know, as much as I did my research, he had a world of knowledge about beds themselves. Oh, man, it's like sleeping on a cloud, man. Kelsey Furniture, downtown Tuscola. Relax. Every month we honor law enforcement because they deserve it. A seven-year guy, eight years in Florida, 15 total. He's now with the Champaign Police Department, presently serves as a sergeant in the patrol division, Sergeant Austin Massey. Why did you get into this business? Ever since I was really young, I was raised to respect law enforcement and appreciate that they are in their position to help us and be ready to assist at your worst time. Growing up, seeing the law enforcement in the community out there helping, just really something I wanted to do and be there to help people on their worst day, help make their lives a little better. How do you approach each day? You never know what you're going to get. Coming into work, you never know. It could be a nice, calm day, nothing going on. I can just take care of paperwork and get everyone squared away. But then the wheels can fall off and we can go call to call to call. It's almost instinct. Relax. Call back. 217 Hey, could you tell me what aisle your car batteries are in? Sure, I'll go grab one for you. Here's your battery. It might be expired, but oh well. Also, the brand isn't that great, but it should work for at least a year or two, maybe. Anyways, I went ahead and charged you for it, and here's the battery. Okay, have a great day. Uh, what just happened? Sometimes good things are hard to find, but they're worth the wait. Make the trip out to Interstate All Battery Center at 2504 North Mattis Avenue and get all of your battery needs taken care of by the trusted professionals. Give them a call today at 355-4855. This is Eddie Clare, president of Paul's. Are you looking for a career and not just a job? Paul's is looking for experienced fabricators and millwrights to join our team on both first and second shifts. We have a great benefit package, including two weeks of paid vacation from day one, a company bonus, health, vision, dental for you and for your family, a 401k with a match. We also offer tuition reimbursement and on-the-job training programs for less experienced fabricators and millwrights. Let Paul's create big possibilities for you, your career, and your life. Apply online at paulsmachine.com. Stevie J Broadcasting is looking for organizations that regularly distribute information regarding employment opportunities to job applicants or have job applicants to refer. If your organization would like to receive notification of job vacancies at our stations, please notify Human Relations at 101 East Washington in Philo, Illinois, 61864, or email hr at sjbroadcasting.com or by phone at 217-367-1195. SJ Broadcasting is an equal opportunity employer encouraging minorities and females to apply. We are back. It is The Drive. The Drive would say in Piper, Derek Piper in Omaha right now. He will join Kyle at what, 4.30, right? 4.30, 4.30, so we'll uh, we'll get Pipe's view from Omaha. But right now, we're going to head to the Tapman's Towing phone line 
and visit with the voice of the Moorhead State Eagles. That is Chuck Mraz. Chuck, how are you, my friend? I'm doing all right. I'm as good as anybody in Nebraska. I love it. And you and I kind of had a funny phone call this morning when I talked with you the first time. I just mentioned the idea that I went to SIU Carbondale, and you immediately responded that you did as well. And then Mike Reese, who has been on our show before, and, of course, just retired as the play-by-play voice of the Salukis. Now, he was your roommate. Now, he did text me back today and say that uh, there may have been a couple of uh, beverages consumed in college at that uh, that apartment you guys lived. <laughs> well, let me just put it this way. I'm glad that's all he admitted to. Right. <laughs> he kept it clean. That's exa- Hey, listen, he's a professional, just like uh, Chuck Mraz is. Well, listen, how excited are they down in Moorhead, Kentucky, in that Lexington area? Obviously, you've got Kentucky in the tournament as a three seed, but it's got to be fun to have Moorhead State back in the NCAA tournament. I, I assume that fan base is pretty fired up. Yeah, they really are. Uh, this is easily uh, one of the best teams in the history of the school. The number of wins proves that, a school record 26 victories. But at the same time, the last time we went to the NCAA tournament was the COVID year of 2021, and really it was like no one could participate in the festivities right. and, and the joy that was uh, that team that year. So really this kind of matches to 2011 in a sense because this is the first time the fan base has really had a chance to get involved as it did then. You are studying the Fighting Illini right now to get ready for your call of this game. What's impressing you right now as you go through the numbers? Well, you know, and I've seen them on film, too. I've watched, uh, you know, game tapes and things. And what really impresses me is the way they they can move around and they have so many different options offensively and the way they can break out and get up and down the floor. And we all know that they're going to try to make this as fast a game as possible and try to get out and transition every bit, uh, every opportunity that they have. So, Red State, obviously, the idea is to grind them out offensively and defensively in the half court. And I think that we're going to have to shoot the ball pretty well from three-point land, which we generally do. I have noticed some of your uh, ability to shoot. I know there's five guys that, that, are, that have hit 33 or more three-pointers on your team, including Khalil Thomas that leads the way, as you know, with 103. So that will be kind of the game plan in your mind is that let's, let's slow this down, get half court, and then uh, do, they, do they punch the ball inside much or is it more of a maybe an, an outside-in or inside-out kind of game? Well, we'll take it to the rack. If there's an opening there to take it to the basket, we'll do that. Riley Minnix is very vers- versatile in that. I mean, he can shoot it from the outside, but he's really good down at the low block. I know that Coach Bradland believes pound for pound he's the strongest player he's ever had at Moorhead wow. State. It reminds me of a player that we had back in the early 90s who won your lead nation in scoring, Brett Roberts, who actually wound up as a pitcher in the Minnesota Twins system. <laughs> and uh, was an All-American basketball player and a second-round pick by the Sacramento Kings, Brett Roberts. Very similar build, very strong players. Can put it on the floor, but can shoot it as well. But uh, our team, you know, if it's there, we'll take it to the basket. If not, we'll kick it back outside and we'll shoot a three. So the guy that needs to guard a guy like Riley Minix would be maybe Coleman Hawkins, someone that can uh, play the low post a little bit but also play the perimeter. Would that be probably the best option for Illinois in that regard? Possibly, you know, possibly, you know, uh, I think Riley's got a very good first step. And what's impressed me is when he has to play down at the low block, sometimes we'll go with a a little smaller lineup where we won't use our starting center, Deontay Miles, or his backup, Zach Eiyemi, and we'll put Riley at the five spot. And he's got great moves as far as – and somehow I've seen him snake his way down the baseline when I didn't think he could even, you know, shoot a golf ball through that hole. (laughs) So Riley Minix definitely a guy to look for. How about a couple of other guys that Illinois fans will need to focus in on when this game tips tomorrow at two? Well, our distributor is Drew Felwell, and uh, this is a guy that uh, scoring is second to him. He wants to make sure he gets the ball into the right hands of him, open for looks. But Drew is a guy that I really like. He can score, he can shoot threes, and he can get to the basket when he needs to. But he prefers to pass it, and he's very good at it. He's averaging over six assists per ball game. He's one of the best assist men in the country. He's ranked 14th right now in the nation in assists. And so uh, he's a guy that you need to keep an eye on. He defends very well and doesn't foul very much. Uh, I think he, at one time he was number one in the country in least fouls, mm. uh, averaging less than one a game at some point. Later in the season when he got 
retired. He picked up a few extra fouls. I'm not sure if that ranking still holds true, but he's a great guy. Jordan Lathan, who had dropped 30 points on Indiana earlier this season, is a guy who can score from the inside and the outside. He can take it to the hole. He can also shoot it from three-point land. You mentioned Khalil Thomas. If he gets his feet set, he gets an open look. He might as well just go ahead and put that on the scoreboard. <laughs> it's amazing his uh, his percentage too. I mean, one hundred three out of two thirty seven for Khalil Thomas. So, as you're saying there, I believe you one hundred percent when it comes to that. Chuck Mraz is our guest. He's the voice of the Moorhead State Eagles. You know, it's 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 such a guard game. It seems like when March rolls around. So, in your mind, is Drew Thelwell the key? to the game tomorrow, or do you still say a guy like Riley Minnix or or Jordan Lathan? That's really hard to say, but Drew Bellwell is the guy who gets us into our offense, so you could call him the key in that sense, I suppose. But at the same time, if the guys aren't scoring around, then I guess it doesn't matter. But everybody has to play their role because we know that we're going up against an outstanding ball club. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, Illinois, with a guy like Terrence Shannon, loves to get it out in transition. I think, and it's not just because we cover Illinois, I think Terrence Shannon may be the best in transition in college basketball. What is that going to present as a problem for Moorhead State? Well, that just means we've got to rebound well. We can't let them transition. I know that they average 14 offensive rebounds a game, which is very, very good. They're the top team and rebounding in the Big Ten, we've got to hold them to one and done as much as possible. We have to rebound pretty well ourselves in the offensive end, and we've got to get back. Our transition defense has to be as good as it can be. My co-host today, Kyle, he knows everything about sports. That's why I like sitting next to him because, first of all, I'm old. Chuck, we've established that this morning, so I don't mind being wrong anymore, and he's just always right. But I did notice on the schedule today – You guys ripped off seven straight wins, then lost three, and now you've ripped off six straight wins. Were injuries a little bit of an issue when when, when you guys lost those three games to Little Rock, UT Martin, and Southern Indiana? Yeah, absolutely. Our second leading scorer, Jordan Latham, at that time, who was averaging 16 points a game, did not play in those games. He hurt his knee, and uh, so we were without him. And even so, we had a chance to win all three of those games. Uh, our guys are, I mean, the one thing I love about this team is the character of this group. I mean, they're tighter than six on a hound's back. Uh, they, they hang out with each other off the floor. They enjoy being around one another, and they play very well together. And they're not afraid to get after one another, but at the same time, they don't take it personally. This is really a tight-knit group, and that's what I love about them the best. And, you know, they knew that Jordan was out. And they still picked up the slack and nearly won those games and very well could have. And I believe Jordan had played in those games. We would have won all three of those games. Fair to say an older squad, right? Minix is senior. I know Lathan is senior. You see Khalil Thomas is senior. Thelwell a junior. I would assume that you're leaning on that experience similar to what Illinois is doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got a lot of veterans on our team. And uh, one thing I did want to point out regarding the injury, we had eight conference games that we were we were without at least one of our starters, and we won six out of those. So, you know, I think that says something about the character of this group and the fact that right. they don't let things bother them. They'll, they'll pick it up and go on. It's just kind of like, all right, what do we need to do now? And so that, that's kind of where I focus on this team is that they do not let obstacles get in their way. They're going to find a way around it. Coach Spradlin has done one heck of a job for Moorhead State Describe him a little bit and his coaching style, and is there panic down in your area about him maybe being a guy that could be looked at at other programs? Well, if he wasn't any good, he wouldn't be looked at. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly. So, yeah, if people are looking at him, uh, they are finding out what we already know about him. This is a guy who's not only really good with X's and O's, and he has a great staff, too. They work well together, and they all have their roles, and they all play them well, and uh, he's, he's – really good at assembling the staff that he's had. But at the same time, uh, I said this about Coach Preston Spradlin. He's also a man of character. He recruits character. He's a great coach, but he's an even better guy. You have been around this a while, Chuck. Uh, what's the feeling from you out in Omaha? What What do you get in the sense here with, uh, with this bracket out there and, and this little pod, if you will? How excited do you think are they in Omaha to get this thing rolling? Oh, I know we're really excited to get this thing rolling. I mean, for me, if we could roll out the basketball right now and get going, <laughs> I, I really, you know, when I played ball myself, I mean, I hated oh. waiting for games. Um, I actually do some coaching on the side right now. 
And it's just like, I hate waiting. Let's just play now. Let's get it going. <laughs> I told Kyle the worst 15 minutes of life is tomorrow at 11 o'clock when the ball tips at 11.15, that very first game of the tournament. That 15 minutes feels like two hours when you're waiting to watch some basketball. What is the plan for you guys tomorrow on the day of the game um, in terms of obviously it's a second game. Will you guys be there to watch that Duquesne-BYU match? We'll be there to watch some of it. Um, you know, I like to get there early anyway uh, just to make sure that from a broadcast standpoint that my equipment is working as it sure. should. And we have everything set up so I get that passed. And then I can also uh, go into my notes again, look at things, and make sure I've got everything set that I want to have set in my head. And then, you know, watch the basketball too as well. But, you know, at the same time, I'm, my whole focus is going to be on one thing, and that's our game with U of I. Absolutely. A couple more questions for Chuck Maraz. He's the voice of the Eagles. When you look at Illinois, a kind of a storyline around here is this team has not advanced to the Sweet 16 since 05. Was that any kind of conversation with the fans at Moorhead State thinking, uh-oh, this, this team might be really hungry to finally do that? No, not at all, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, we're more worried about ourselves than we are about them. Obviously, they're a great opponent. But at the same time, you have to focus on what got you to where you are. Sure. Focus on who you are and doing the things that you do well and do them as well as you can and the game plan that you put in place. But that's never been a point of conversation. We know they're a great team, and their past history doesn't mean anything. It's just about tomorrow. Any run-ins with you and Brad Underwood over the years? Any any kind of stories that you guys ever uh, met each other, et cetera, along the way? No, not at okay. all. Not at all. Uh, I'm very impressed with the, his coaching history and what he's done at Illinois. I mean, he's uh, really set a standard. You know, I remember I did meet uh, – we last played Illinois in 1993. I did that game in Champaign, and Lou Henson was the coach. Got oh, a chance wow. to meet him, liked him, and, uh, you know, Brad Underwood is, is, is setting his own standard. He totally is. One other thing I thought about, Chuck, is you look at a guy like Marcus Damask, who shined at, uh, at SIU, of course, which, you know, in, in the same kind of stratosphere as the OVC as the Missouri Valley. That, that's kind of a neat story, what has developed this year with Marcus and the fact that he kind of stepped up, if you will, to the Big Ten. And, boy, has he done a job this year for the Illini. And he's such a smart player, too. Uh, that's what I'm also impressed with. I, I've watched enough of him to see how smart he is, and he knows what to do and when to do it. And he can score with the basketball. He can he can get to the goal. Uh, he plays hard. I mean, uh, he distributes the ball well. Uh, he's the real deal, without a doubt. And now you got to do that interview with Brian Barnhart. You know, he, he that he's such a mean dude. Now, good luck with that, Chuck. <laughs> well, single thing I said to you when I talked to him. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Brian, one of the best. There's no doubt about it. Well, Chuck Mraz, first of all, congratulations to Moorhead State, the Eagles, and to you as well, a storied career in this business, and it was an honor to have you on today. Very fun to visit, and good luck tomorrow. It should be a fun game. Well, thanks so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Chuck. That is great stuff. That is the voice of the Moorhead State Eagles, Chuck Mraz. Uh, he's been doing it quite a while and uh, someone that has been around the game, he actually he mentioned, Kyle, that he coaches a little on the side. He actually coaches, helps coach a high school JV mm. team. So Another uh, team that could outscore Virginia, <laughs> right? huh? You know, I should have asked him that. Why didn't you pop in and, and ask that question? Well, you didn't know, though. You didn't know I at the didn't. time. You just that, told me that. But. <laughs> that was my fault. I should have. I should have armed you with some information on Chuck. But very cool. A former Saluki. It's great to visit with him. A great voice. I can imagine how good of a call he has for Moorhead State. Obviously, the Eagles, as he mentioned, you know they're going to try to get down to business in this thing and make it a game with Illinois. But you do look at their schedule, and it gives you a little bit of a pause. Kyle, when it comes to playing some other Big Ten teams and what has happened to them. Now, obviously, he mentioned Indiana. You had mentioned Indiana as well, the idea that they gave the Hoosiers everything they could. They lost 69-68 in that one. I remember watching a little of that game. It was one of those where, I forget, it must have been in December or something, and you look on your score app and, uh uh-oh, Indiana's losing to Moorhead State. Let me flip on BTN, see what's going on here. Jordan Lathan was the guy who dominated that 30 game. points that night. Uh, Minix had 11 rebounds going up against a guy like Khalil Ware and uh, Malik Renu. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive to go in there and get that kind of uh, stuff done against that Indiana team. That was on Tuesday, December 19th. 
So you you will never forget that night now. Now that you were able to watch uh, Lathan and the uh, Eagles do what they did against Indiana, of course, losing 69-68. But the, the games that give you a little pause, they started the year against Alabama. And, of course, Bama is ranked currently 24th in the country. It's They're a team that is in the NCAA tournament. Who did they match up with? Charleston? That's right. Charleston. And uh, they lost to Alabama. Moorhead State did 105-73. Alabama, a team that profiles similarly to Illinois, That's too. That's a good a point. Really dynamic offensive team. Struggled defensively this year, but you see them put 105 mm. on Moorhead State, and that definitely gives you a little bit of hope that maybe – it. A uh, high-powered, high-major offense overwhelms this defense of Moorhead State. And you got a guy, Riley Minix, led the way for the Eagles in rebounding and points and assists that game. They also went to Purdue, and everybody knows how tough that is, but they lost by 30 there, 87-57. And then a little later went to Penn State and lost 74-51 to the Nittany Lions. So 0-3 versus the Big Ten this season. One game that was impressive, falling to Indiana by a point, but a couple, of course, that uh, didn't go very well when you're talking 20 and 30-point uh, losses, essentially, to Penn State and uh, Purdue in that one. You know, as a guy that covered a kind of a mid, mid-level, mid mid-major team of SIU and Kyle, I was fortunate right after I graduated in 92, the Salukis in 93, 94, and 95 made the NCAA tournament. They won that Mo Valley tournament over in uh, Arch Madness there in uh, in St. Louis. And I remember the very first year, and, and this is what I mean by this is a program can get used to playing at that level, but I think the first year sometimes is kind of a shock. Now, I know that uh, Chuck mentioned they played in the NCAA tournament back in the COVID year, which has been, what, three years now Yep. with that? So you don't know how many of these guys were really that big of a weapon, if you will, or had that much production for Moorhead State back in that day, you know, three, three years ago. But I can remember that first year that SIU team was – they had some youth in, on that team, and they faced Duke up in Chicago, a very good Duke team with Marty Clark, Cherokee Parks, uh, guys like that. I mean, they were solid, and, and really SIU got run off the court in that game. And then the next year, they get back to the tournament. They went out to Sacramento to play Minnesota out of the Big Ten, still got beat by double digits, but they held their own for a lot of that game, whereas the year before against Duke, it was kind of like you just kind of knew right off the bat that you were in trouble. And, of course, that year's Duke team a lot better than the next year's Minnesota squad. But still, when you say that, I, I can remember with these guys on SIU like Marcus Timmons, Chris Carr, Paul Lusk, these guys were kind of young that first year against Duke. Then the next year against Minnesota, they they you could just tell they were a little more poised. They were a little more uh, ready for the moment, if you will. And then the third year in a row in 95, SIU went down to Austin, Texas, to battle Syracuse, and actually they played in that game for most of it. Now, a freshman out of Pinckneyville, Shane Hawkins, ended up hitting like five threes in that game. But your leaders on that team with Timmons and Carr and such, Chris Lowry was the guy that played on those teams, of course now an assistant at Northwestern, last year's assistant of the year in the Big Ten. But you could tell, Kyle, by that third year, they were ready to go. They were, the, the, the stage was not big anymore for SIU and they were like hey we belong here we deserve to play in this game so let's go out and give the orange a battle and certainly they did now Syracuse again won that game and of course SIU lost all three of those in succession but my point is you could just kind of tell how those guys really uh, stepped up to the challenge each year a little bit better that's the thing maybe I would worry about if you're Moorhead State a little bit because a lot of these guys probably really haven't been in that spot But, again, a lot of seniors on this team. Lathan is a senior. Minix is a senior. Uh, Thelwell is a junior. The good three-point shooter, uh, Thomas, is a senior. So, this is a veteran team similar to Illinois, and they probably will be able to take that first, you know, hit, if you will, from the Illini and go from there. I'll ask you a question, Kyle. Illinois, three straight games at the Big Ten tournament, fell behind early. In fact, we know it's well documented they were behind in double digits in all three of those and come back. You know, came back to win those games, obviously. 
Any concern from you of Illinois staggering out of the blocks a little bit and then giving Moorhead State a lot of maybe confidence early in that game? Because if you give a team like that some confidence early, if Riley Minix can do his thing, if, if they're hitting a couple of threes, you give a team confidence, and that really helps, especially early in a game. What are, what are your thoughts on the Illini out of the gate? I think you're absolutely right. That's the key to the game for me is take control of this one early, impose your will early, get out and run, mm-hmm. and take control of the tempo of the game and play fast because it's a Moorhead State team that, as Chuck kind of alluded to, and as you look at some of their numbers, they are a team that plays pretty slow and wants to just kind of bog the game down in sure. the half court and find their shooters and put Minix in some actions in the mid post or whatever it is. So Illinois needs to get off to a fast start and really just kind of take control of how this game's going to be played. And I agree with you, too. A lot of these upsets that we see in the NCAA tournament, it's very rare that you see, oh, a 14 seed just erased right. the 18-point deficit Good call. and came back and won. No, it was they got off to a quick start. The confidence started to build. You go into the locker room, and that team feels like, hey, we can win this game. We're in this game. We just competed for 20 minutes. Let's go do it for 20 more. And so I think it gets dicey for Illinois if you let them hang around too long, if you let them get that confidence, feel like they belong on the same floor as you, that's where you really could start to feel some game pressure there late because all the pressure is going to be on you. If Moorhead State's There's no doubt. down by one at the under four timeout late in the game, all the pressure, especially with the, hist- the NCAA tournament recent history for Illinois, will yep. be on that Illinois bench, and Moorhead State will be able to go out there kind of with house money like, well, we're not expected to win it, but mm-hmm. we're here. Let's go do it. Illinois needs to take control of this one. They can't let Moorhead State hang around. You're so much more talented Terrence Shannon Jr., the way he's played, if he comes out of the gate, gets out in transition early with a couple easy buckets in Illinois, can really comfortably kind of head into the locker room at halftime feeling like they've controlled the game. I think you can have a nice, easy breathing day, afternoon, and start looking forward to Saturday, but you do not want to let Moorhead State hang around. There is an uneasy feeling in a in an arena when a higher seed is when a better seed is losing Mm -hmm. or even if it's a close game I've sat through plenty of those and I can promise you whoever wins that first game between Duquesne and BYU that fan base is immediately going to become fans of Moorhead State so now you've doubled kind of the fans there for them now I I'm totally convinced Illinois will have as many fans as probably all three of those right. <laughs> schools combined, maybe not BYU, but certainly Illinois, they travel. We know that. Illini fans love to travel. I was just looking. There are four guys, and it's the four guys we've referenced for the last 30 minutes, that average over 30 minutes a game for Moorhead State. So you got to wonder if the depth of Illinois with a Harmon, with a Dane Danger, with a Luke Goody, you got to wonder if the, if the depth will be able to kind of wear down Moorhead State as well. This is a one. Moorhead State team that I, looks like really plays six guys yep. consistently. And with the way Illinois was drawing fouls over the weekend, if Terrence Shannon gets a couple of those bigs in foul trouble, all of a sudden Moorhead State That'd is be trouble. probably throwing some guys out there that – aren't really ready to play against a team like Illinois. It's a great point. All right, Kyle Tosk, Lon Tay. It is the drive with Tay and Piper. When we come back next hour, you'll hear Kyle and I visit for a little bit longer, and then you're going to hear some Brad Underwood from today. They met with the media there in Omaha. You'll hear Brad Underwood. And then bottom of the hour, Kyle's going to take it over and have a an exclusive with Derek Piper. It's, it's an exclusive for Kyle Tosk with D-Pipes, who is in Omaha. I'll be excited to hear what you guys are talking about. I am going to be on my way to a baseball game, so my apologies, but big thanks to both you and Pipes for kind of stepping in and allowing that to happen. So I look forward to that. Let's take a break. We're back. If you want to weigh in on the U of I Line Lick text line, you can do that at 217-359-2255. Chuck Mraz, voice of the Eagles, joined us on the Tapman's Towing phone line. We're back. It is The Drive. Hi, this is Chris Jackson with Kramer Siding and Window. And whatever your project, you can count on Kramer Siding to offer you the best products backed by the best warranties in the business and a lifetime of great customer service. And right now, you can save 10% on roofing, sunrooms, and decks, get 15% off gutter helmet, and you can save 25% on preservation siding, windows, and doors. So call today or visit us at kramersiding.com and let's get started on your project. During challenging times, family and health come first. This is Starla Carr with Provident Financial Group. 
Many of us have spent the past year feeling a little bit out of control. There are steps you can take to help plan for a better financial future. Now is the time to take action and create a financial plan that's right for you. Contact us today at 217-366-3456 or find us online at ProvidentFinancialGroupLLC.com. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network. Member FINRA, SIPC, a registered investment advisor. You're listening to WSJK ESPN 93.5 Tuscola Champaign-Urbana, your home for the St. Louis Cardinals. President Biden stays the course on Lisa Brady, Fox News. Unlike my predecessor, I was determined to turn things around to invest in American, all American, all American. Visiting an Intel plant in Arizona to highlight computer chip investments as an example of his agenda working. He has campaign stops this evening in Texas. Joe Biden, through his actions, is violating the laws of the United States of America. Governor Greg Abbott accusing the president of lying about needing Congress to act on border security as legal fights continue over the state's efforts to crack down on illegal immigration. Two more of the former sheriff's deputies who called themselves the Goon Squad are sent to prison in Mississippi for the racist torture of two black men last year. The former Rankin County Sheriff's deputies admitted breaking into a home in Braxton, Mississippi and torturing two black men, shooting one of them in the mouth following a complaint from a neighbor that the men were staying with a white woman. Former Deputy Christian Dedman, receiving the longest sentence handed down so far, ordered to serve 40 years. Daniel Opdyke was sentenced to 17 and a half years in federal prison. Each had pled guilty to federal civil rights charges. Fox's Jack Callahan, Opdyke crying in court today as he told the victims his actions haunt him and that he had turned into a monster that night. Two others were sentenced yesterday. A fifth former deputy and an ex-police officer will be sentenced tomorrow. An inmate and an accomplice remain on the loose after a shootout at an Idaho hospital overnight where the inmate, Skyler Mead, was being treated for what police call self-injurious behavior. Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger says corrections officers were preparing to transport Mead back to prison when the accomplice ambushed them and both got away in a car. It appears to be a 2020 gray Honda Civic and uh, that vehicle was seen fleeing from the scene. Two corrections officers were shot and wounded by the suspect. A third was shot during a gunfight as responding officers arrived. America is listening to Fox News. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So, get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Are you over 30 and putting off life insurance? It's time to get a quick quote from Ethos, a better, easier way to get term life insurance, all online with no medical exam. Answer a few health questions and you could be approved for up to $2 million. Isn't it worth 10 minutes to help protect your family's financial security? Ethos, up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Florida is banning homeless encampments on public property. Aiming to prevent widespread tent camps or homeless people in public spaces seen more frequently in New York and California, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs a new law prohibiting camping on streets, sidewalks, or parks, but directs resources to shelters and homeless outreach. The bill also provides alternatives for when homeless shelters have reached max capacity, but this is going to require that their services are there to help people get back on their feet. DeSantis speaking in Miami Beach. The bill does allow each municipality to designate some public land for long-term camping, but will limit people to one year. In Broward County, Florida, Eben Brown, Fox News. The Fed chair says inflation is still too high, and they're not ready to start rate cuts just yet. We know that reducing policy restraint too soon or too much could result in a reversal of the progress we have seen on inflation and ultimately require even tighter policy 
to get inflation back to 2%. But Fed Chair Jay Powell says waiting too long could weaken economic activity. The Fed's still expecting to cut rates three times this year after leaving a benchmark rate unchanged today. New highs on Wall Street after the Fed announcement. The Dow up 401 points to 39,512. The S&P topping 5,200. The Nasdaq also with a record close, 16,369. A lot of big dreams are riding on tonight's Powerball jackpot, $687 million worth. The Mega Millions jackpot, even bigger. No winning Mega Millions grand prize ticket was drawn on Tuesday night, so the jackpot has grown to $977 million. And while no one won the big prize, four players, one each in California, Texas, Florida, and Virginia, matched all five white balls to win a million dollars. Fox's Tony J. Powers, the next mega drawing is Friday. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. Here's a look at local news. Champaign police called to the 2500 block of West Springfield for reports of shots fired, locating a 46-year-old Champaign man in medical distress. The man transported to an area hospital for treatment, and while there, it was determined that a wound on his arm had been caused by a gunshot. Governor signed an executive order to provide equity and access to gene cell therapy in the state. It would apply to therapies like recently approved therapy for sickle cell disease. It directs the state's Department of Health Care and Family Services to set up payment models and financial structures for sickle cell disease treatments. National Weather Service confirming seven tornadoes touched down across Illinois last week, four of them in Jersey and Macoupin counties. Tornadoes were weak and caused minor damage with no reports for injuries. Four of the tornadoes were rated EF0 and touched down early last Thursday morning. That's a look at what's happening. You're up to date from the Stevie J Broadcasting Newsroom. I'm Jim Miller. Good afternoon. It is The Drive, ESPN Radio 93.5. The Drive would say, and Piper, Derek Piper, is going to be on these airwaves this hour. About 4.30, he'll join Kyle Tosk from Omaha. We'll get his thoughts on what is uh, about to transpire in that game and of course, in the game tomorrow, of course. There are a lot of games tomorrow for uh, NCAA tournament, and I was going to kind of go through some of that and let everybody know. Of course, those that probably are already planning the national holiday, as I mentioned, they've already probably got things figured out as to what game they've get, they're going to want to watch and this and that. I think it is cool, Kyle, that Duquesne and BYU, which is Illinois' next opponent if they beat Moorhead State, is on right off the bat at 11.40. So an 11.15 a.m. game with CBS – uh, of Michigan State and Mississippi State, and then on True TV, which is where the Illinois game will be, following the uh, Duquesne du- 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 BYU game. I think that's cool. Does that get you kind of? I don't want to say hyped up, but is that cool for you to know that? Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of see what these teams do before I watch my squad and see kind of how prepared we need to be to face a Duquesne or a BYU. You know, I think I probably would prefer if they played after Illinois because I'm going to be focused on beating Moorhead State. I told you during the break, I've started to just get a little bit more nervous it about happens, this man. Illinois game as it's gotten closer, probably more than I should be. But, I mean, it'll it'll be interesting to watch that game. I think it should be a good game just to get a feel for what those teams look like, but it'd almost be better if you could get – you know Illinois is on to the next right, round, and then right. after Illinois is done, then they could pop on, and now you're <laughs> like, all right, let me lock in and see what we're up against Saturday. But hopefully Illinois will have no issues taking care of business. Illinois, 11.5-point favorite in the game versus Moorhead State. In the BYU game, the Cougars, 9.5-point favorites over Duquesne. It's got to be one of the biggest spreads ever for a 6-11 game. I would say you're right. Because BYU is technically a 5 seed, exactly. and Duquesne – one of the worst 11 seeds ever. I mean, I don't I really have no idea how they're on the 11 line. Is that already the storyline? Like Illinois loses to BYU Saturday and it's like, "Well, we had to play a 5 and blah blah blah." Listen, Illinois is better than this BYU. Exactly. Team. So, exactly. I, 
you know, and you heard a lot of that after Loyola, but at the same time, See, you were so much better than yes. Loyola, so I don't really want to hear it then. I put more credence in it when it was the Houston team where that was an Illinois team that was flawed. They, they were the worst team in that matchup. They were a four seed. Houston was the five. Houston was favored. All yeah, of a sudden you're exactly. playing like a top five Ken Palm team. That I, I think is a little bit more fair, but this is a better Illinois team than BYU. I get that they're technically a five, but you should win that game. No, that's well said on your part because – I've always said, look, did it stink that Loyola was in the 8-9 game when they should have been probably a 5 or a 6 seed? The point is you're a 1 seed. You should beat them anyway. doesn't matter where they're seated. Take care of business in that one. You mentioned that the nerves are starting to get there for you. Think about this a second before you immediately answer. How nervous do you think Brad Underwood gets, is getting? I'm sorry, let me say that like that, not gets. How nervous do you think Brad Underwood is getting or or – anxious if you will because of that track record of the one thing he hasn't been able to do at Illinois forget the national championship he hasn't gotten this team out of the first round of the NCAA tournament do you think that's cause for you know do you think there, that is cause for some nerves for Brad Underwood now he is kind of a changed man this year with this older roster I know in the past he got yell, you know he got criticized for yelling at players but all of that has gone away this year. Now he'll still he'll still release uh, Ohio State huddle <laughs> in the Big Ten tournament. He was he, he brought the uh, 2018 Underwood back he'll, out. He'll still get that hair going to where he's got to kind of fluff it back, you know, at the, at the end of his uh, little chat. But for the most part, it's been a relaxed Brad Underwood all season, and a lot of that has to do with the experience and the in the idea that he knows he tells these guys what to do, they go do it right. They know before he tells them what they're supposed to do. That said, do you think that puts a little extra worry to Brad Underwood in, in the idea of, man, just let me get two wins in this tournament? Don't get me going on the two-win thing either. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I, I would imagine if you sat down with them off the record casually, he would tell you that he probably is feeling it a little bit. Sure. I, I just – and especially with how – openly that he has praised this team and it seems like he really loves this team more than he has almost any team he's had there's got to be something to like he if Moorhead State comes out and is knocking a bunch of shots down oh. or if you know if he's so close and you heard him talk this year too in some of these press conferences where he has that vivid memory of when he was at Stephen F. Austin and he loved that Stephen F. Austin team he had but Notre Dame bounced them in the round of 32 on a last second tip in where they had like Ugh. three tips and that's how you lose like I I'm sure that he's worried that something similar will happen because I think he believes that this team has a really high ceiling and that right. this team should be the team that he takes to that sweet 16 at least and based on what he said he thinks they can go further and they absolutely could if they play their best basketball but I, I think he probably is feeling like yeah if this goes wrong or if we don't show up to play or if something happens here this weekend where this team doesn't get out of it it's going to be it obviously it's it's going to reflect very poorly on him based on his history here at Illinois but also I think he feels like that shouldn't happen with this group yeah and and of course we're we're getting into the mind of Brad Underwood and and he might be sitting there having a cold beer each night going I right, listen I'm not worried at all I mean I, I've got a team that's comprised of veterans I've got an all-american on this team I've got an all two all big 10 guys I've got Coleman Hawkins who's been around here for four seasons I I'm not worried at all about this team but it, it, it would be interesting to see if it would creep in his mind about even BYU the fact that they're a six seed in this tournament and it's never happened before but they're actually a the highest five seed that had to be listed as a six so they don't play on a Sunday. And it's just crazy when you consider that. That's such – now, look, I try to avoid the – that's so Illinois. That's such an Illinois thing, right, where it's like, oh, remember the one year? Like, you can just – like, in 20 years from now or 10 years from now, oh, you remember the one year where BYU was seeded fifth or sixth when they were actually the highest seeded fifth team? And then they made the rule that uh, from now on you can't ever jump a spot <laughs> like that or something. I, mean, I don't know. It's just it's interesting. What are you going to do if BYU's in the same spot next year, though? Like yeah. it's just such a unique situation to them. Unique. So I, yeah, it's of course it'd be Illinois. That I, I know you didn't want to say it, but I yeah, know. It, 
it would be Illinois that would draw that. I know. All right, so again, you've got Michigan State, Mississippi State tipping the tournament off. At Heck of a game to start it. Without a doubt. Uh, Michigan State is a uh, – are, well, it's MSU. I don't know which one's Michigan the favorite. Michigan State is, is favored. Michigan State yep. <laughs> a one-and-a-half point favorite. As mentioned, BYU nine-and-a-half point favorite over to Duquesne. Game three of the day on TNT at 1230, we'll have Creighton against Akron and John Gross – so that game, uh, Creighton, a 12-and-a-half point favorite. That game in Pittsburgh. Arizona tips off at one against Long Beach State. They're a big favorite, 20-and-a-half there. North Carolina, the one seed against Wagner. That tips at 145. Carolina, the heels, 24-and-a-half point favorites in that one. So you will have. I do really like that the three games that will be ending while Illinois is playing probably won't be close. I don't right. want to say I don't want to say for sure. That's true. We've seen it happen, but a 314, a 215 and a 116. So when you're locked into Illinois, you're probably hopefully not missing a whole lot. That's a great point. That's a great point when it comes to just being a basketball fan in general. Uh five games will be played essentially before Illinois tips at 210. Illinois, an 11.5-point favorite in that against Moorhead State. After that, at 3 o'clock, you've got Oregon against South Carolina. The Gamecocks, a game and a half, or a point-and-a-half favorite in that game, also in Pittsburgh. Following that, you've got Nevada and Dayton. Nevada, the 10 seed, actually a one-and-a-half-point favorite against Dayton. That game is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Starts at 3.30 on TBS. Then you get that little break. Right there's a little bit of a break in there, but at five five fifty, is kind of starts the nightcap, if you will, in the tournament, and that's where Colorado State, who just played last night, will turn around two days later to face Texas. Texas two and a half point favorite. That game is in Charlotte. That tip is at five fifty. So if you're one of those unlucky ones that had to work all day Thursday. And the first chance you get to see a game, it's going to be Colorado State, Texas at 550. 610, you've got Oakland and Kentucky. The Wildcats, 13 and a half point favorites in that one. 625, and I'm kind of looking forward to this game because it could be big for my mm-hmm. bracket. Is number 12 McNeese going against number five Gonzaga? That's a 625 game on TBS. The Zags, six and a half point favorites. When did McNeese become McNeese and not McNeese State? No idea. I thought they've always been McNeese State. I'm looking at something that calls them McNeese State. Okay, well, on this, they're just listed as McNeese, so that was a little confusing to me. Uh, Right after that, Iowa State. So, again, another team that could Illinois could run into down the road at 635. Iowa State tips with South Dakota State. The Cyclones, 16.5-point favorites. I would take South Dakota State to cover the spread there. Hmm. Well, Iowa State just kind of... You don't think Iowa State's like all-out pressure will turn them over 27 maybe, times and maybe. they'll blow them out? Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, so, for Illinois fans, you get a chance before the Illini game to check out BYU Decane after the Illini game tomorrow night if you're not at some shed at 11 a.m. drinking, you'll you'll be able to focus in on Iowa State at 6:35. I don't think you're going to have to worry about facing South Dakota State down the road, so you can kind of never zoom say in. never in you the never, tournament. That's true. That's a good point. So then tomorrow night at 8:20, Tennessee, the two seed, will face St. Peter's on TNT. Tennessee, a big, uh, obviously favorite there, 21 and a half. NC State follows at 8:40 against Texas Tech. That's one of those weird games. There's always one of those weird games that has two power five teams that I have no interest in watching. Hmm. And I, yeah. do you ever have that? I mean, you're so young. You, you don't have the years of doing this necessarily. But it just seems like there's always one game a day where I'm like, yeah, I'm not. And w- what I mean by that is, like, Tennessee-St. Peter's probably won't be that good of a game, so that doesn't excite me much. But normally the games that are like within a four and a half point spread, you'd think you'd be excited to watch yep. that. But like NC State and Texas Tech do nothing for me. Nothing. Yeah, I mean that NC State wouldn't be in the tournament if they didn't win five in five days. Right. Although I, I will say it's pretty fun to watch DJ Burns, their big guy. He is like a bowling ball. I don't know if you've seen him. Mm-mm. 
he is massive. And when I mean massive, I mean both height and oh, really? width. Okay. And he is he's a tough guy to stop. He's kind of fun to watch at a great ACC tournament. But Well, I'm glad you said that. I'll that's, have to... uh, that's your interest in that one is just to watch DJ Burns. He's pretty funny. Perfect. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll tune in at 840. Uh, at 855, Kansas, of course, without Kevin McCullers Jr.? Yep. He is out, and of course, if you remember the Illinois scrimmage against Kansas, McCullers and Shannon were trading buckets down the stretch. They used to be teammates at Texas Tech. So watch for that. Watch for this Kansas. Now, probably not going to lose to Samford, who is 29 and 5, and it's Samford, not Sanford. But uh, very popular upset pick, though, well, especially with McCuller, Samford. And is Dickinson back? Dickinson will be back. Okay. I think Kansas still, like, he's still got Bill Self. I don't yeah, think he's yeah, losing yeah, yeah. to Samford with uh, Hunter Dickinson. Jayhawks, seven and a half point favorites in that one. The final game of the night is one that I'm really looking forward to, and that's out of the Missouri Valley. Number 10 seed Drake at 28 and six will face seven seed Washington State. Again, here's another 10 7 where the 10 is the favorite. Like Nevada was earlier, Drake is one and a half point favorite over Washington State. So this game one is going to, from start to finish, as it would every year, it's going to suck you in, and you're going to be interested in watching all of these games. And you know, it's always here in the Midwest. It's always an eleven to eleven kind of uh, day with a little bit of a break, uh, it, you know, mid afternoon or kind of early evening, if you will. I, when I went to Vegas for I went to Vegas for the first four rounds one year, Kyle, the the tip was at nine o'clock in the morning, so we were up. You talk about four guys in their prime, right? Like ready to hit Vegas and go at it. We were in bed every night by like eleven o'clock because we were up at six a.m. We'd all shower. There was a place for breakfast right below us. Then we'd hit the uh, we'd go over to the sports book, place all of our bets. And then we had to be at what other loca- whatever location we were going to be at that day to, for the first tip at 9 o'clock in the morning. So that was interesting in Vegas, how you were going 9 to 9, to nine essentially. And by 10 o'clock at night, you're just like, I'm out, man. I'm tired and I'm ready to roll. So that is your schedule tomorrow. So besides Illinois-Moorhead State, what's the one game you really want to watch? Is it BYU-Duquesne? No, I think it's Gonzaga McNeese. Okay, that's I'm with the game. You I'm really. I think McNeese is really intriguing. I'm kind of going. It's funny. I'm picking the five seed in my bracket, and I'm going like against the general public. Feels I like know. everyone's going McNeese, but I do think that's <laughs> going to be a fun game, and I think that one will come right down to the wire. I think okay. that's really intriguing. It's going to be fun. I, I'm with you there. I, that McNeese game, I'm I'm really looking forward to, and I'm also looking forward to the Drake. Washington That's going to be a battle. great nightcap. But I, I, I also think it's going to be fun to be able to kind of get an eye on Iowa State. I haven't seen them much. And then also, of course, Duquesne and Duke. All right, here's the schedule. I'm going to get out of here. When you come back, Kyle is going to play some Brad Underwood. He met with the media today. Uh, you'll hear what the Illini coach has to say. And then around 4.30, 4.35, Derek Piper will join Kyle to round out the show. We'll get Pipe's thoughts from Omaha. <laughs> I'm heading to a baseball game after this. Taxes. Oh, man. Deadline to file Tuesday, April 16. It's quickly approaching. Busey wants you to know there's a few things you can do to uh, keep money in your pocket. How about contribute to a retirement account? you got to do that by the 16th. Organize your records and file electronically. It's the did you know less than 1% of electronic returns have errors compared to 20% of paper returns. If you get money back and the average person makes $3,000 back, they suggest you pay down some bad debt, build savings, retirement, investment accounts, or maybe establish or restore an emergency fund. Just visit Busey.com or stop by one of their many convenient locations to get started today on your maximum refund. They can help you see the way through this that is Busey they're always there to help Busey member FDIC go Illini
Welcome to Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. Hi, I'm looking for a refrigerator. When you buy from us, you get the whole store. Oh, yeah, well, I just need a refrigerator. Don't need the whole store. But you get it, the whole store. My kitchen is only about this big. You get me. Hello. All those delivery, installation, and service technicians in back. Wow, all those people? The Dick Van Dyke 5, 10-year protection plan, which means in the unlikely event something goes wrong in the first five years, your repair cost is nothing. Nothing? 10 years parts coverage on the major components. Looks like I'm getting more than the refrigerator today. Um, how much does this whole store cost? Nothing. Come on. For real. We guarantee to beat any competitor's deal, all that other stuff we talked about, like our service tax. And your 5, 10-year protection plan. All all included. I'm Dennis Freak and chairman of Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. And when we say you get the whole store, we mean the whole store. Wow! Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. When you buy from us, you get the whole store. Accumulation, preservation, generation. At Busey Bank, these are the principles we use to build meaningful financial partnerships with our clients and their families. With sound advice and vast resources, partner with Busey for a personalized approach to your legacy. Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868. Proud to be the official bank of the Fighting Illini, member FDIC. PDR Automotive has now been serving the Champaign-Urbana area for over 50 years. To give you some perspective, 50 years ago ended the U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War, and it was when Secretariat won the Triple Crown. So what does that mean for you and your vehicle? Whether you need a carburetor overhauled or your new vehicle computer system diagnosed or programmed, PDR Automotive has the experienced, knowledgeable staff that can handle all your automotive needs. Online at PDRauto.com, they are what's best for your truck or car. They are... PDR. The Alma Market is your one-stop shop for one-of-a-kind creations from the University of Illinois alumni and students, as well as unique finds from some of your favorite Urbana Champaign area businesses. Treat yourself or a loved one and support your fellow Illini today. If you're a University of Illinois student, alum, or Champaign-Urbana area business, feature your products on the Alma Market. Becoming a vendor is a great way to expand your reach and connect with Illini across the country. For more details, visit almamarket.org. Go Illini! Terrific to be here. Uh, there's nothing better than uh, the NCAA tournament. There's nothing better than hearing your name called on Selection Sunday. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here uh, with this group. Uh, we've, uh, I think we're coming into this, this tournament, obviously off the Big Ten Championship, and, and uh, feel like uh, it's different than in, in, in the last few years. Um, this group is very healthy. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're playing our best basketball. Uh, I feel like we're whole, uh, which is, um, is something that through the course of a long season, uh, there's always ups and downs and trials and tribulations and so on, um, sickness, injuries, whatever. And, and you have to deal with that. And, and so, you know, I think we're in a, in a very good place injury-wise. I think we're in a good place sickness and all that. And uh, um, we had three kind of different games in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, the first day we didn't play very well uh, and found a way to win. And, and I love that resilient mentality. I think you've got to have that as you move into the NCAA tournament. And, um, you know, it, it was probably not my favor to be down – double digits three times but uh, I think we found a way to uh, uh, persevere through through some of those tough moments uh, obviously we've got uh, uh, Terrence Shannon had a phenomenal uh, tournament and, and, and played great uh, Marcus Damask uh, really after the first night was close to triple doubles and played great so uh, Omaha I've been in this venue uh, one other time in the NCAA tournament back when I was an assistant at Kansas State it's one of the great basketball cities, great venues. Uh, so we're, we're really, really excited to be here. And uh, we've got a great uh, great challenge tomorrow against Moorhead State, a team that's um, uh, playing awfully well, earned the right to be here, uh, extremely well coached, and, and got a lot of respect for, uh, for their program. First question is down here on the left. Hey, Brad. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Uh, 
you'd mentioned Terrence and, and the Big Ten tournament. Uh, I know he's had some pretty good uh, stretches during the season, but had you seen him play three straight games like that at that level? He's becoming more consistent um, as a player. I think the one thing that's that's uh, to answer your question, no, I not at that, not at forty points, thirty four. I mean, he's had some individually big games, uh, but it was called upon for him to to do that. Um, he's becoming very consistent. As he's been with us a second year. Uh, the NBA process was great for him. Uh, he listened and he went to work uh, on on things that were uh, they thought were issues with his game. So he's gotten better. Uh, but um, he is, uh, uh, you know, he's doing what great players do at in big moments, and that's and that's rise to the occasion. So. Uh, that was that was special watching that and the 40 point game was very organic we don't run a ton for him um, you know I just looked at the box score at the end of the game and it's like oh wow you know he's he's got a, he had a night and uh, he did it in all different facets of 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 the of play with the threes with uh, transition getting to the foul line um, very efficient coach uh, sincere Harris Played every game last year. Comes into this year red shirting. Just what have you seen out of him, and just how he's approached and handled his new role this year? He's a big reason we're as prepared as we are. He's in. He's he's with the scout team. Uh, nobody talks more trash. Nobody's more competitive. Nobody's f- fights more in practice. He guards Terrence a lot uh, in practice, but uh, his work ethic. Uh, very unselfish on his part to want to, to red shirt. That was that was him wanting to do that. Uh, get bigger, get stronger. Uh, he's lived with our strength coach. Um, he's been in the gym uh, every single day for workouts, uh, working on his jump shot. Uh, so we see a much improved player, but we also see one that uh, helps make the guys that are playing better every day. Three questions are up. Go, please. Coach, you've had a lot of success at Illinois. You've got a couple of Big Ten championships, a lot of wins, but the NCAA tournament has been tough, and rightfully so. There's a lot of good teams here. How does this team sustain a run this year, knowing history and last year's first-round loss? They don't know history. They don't know. That's, that's, that's only because you guys talk about it. Um, this is a new group, uh, veteran group. Um, you know, it, it's... it's um, uh, one game at a time. It's every day at a time. We have the saying, everyday guys. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, every great program, uh, there's been a ton of them that have ups and downs in the tournament. Uh, one of the reasons I like this group is we're healthy. Um, and, and that's a big thing going into, you know, the NCAA tournament and postseason play to sustain any type of run. But it's one game at a time. Uh, I think you've, you have to understand the abruptness of the end. Uh, I think this group's old, and I think they, they, they truly understand that. <clears throat> hey, Coach, uh, that part of the season early on when you didn't have Terrence, uh, players kind of learned how to win without him, and then he came back, obviously, better, a better team. Do you think if he hadn't come back, would this you'd still be in this position, or was he just that important to the, the overall team? No, I think, I think it, it helped us in a certain sense, but... Uh, um, you know, we found our we were we were finding our identity uh, right about then on the especially on the offensive side and and uh, uh, yet we continued to flourish. Uh, you know I think we, we went into a shock a little bit uh, our first road game at Purdue without him. Um, you know there's there was a sense of swagger that that uh, that he gave us. We didn't you know we were down twenty to four I think. Uh, but um, but from that point on, I think we got better, and and uh, and then it's been um, you know since he was he's been back, it was just reinstating and, and and him kind of fitting in. He knew that we were playing well, and uh, uh, so it's made us better along the way. Hey Brad, uh, I was thinking of that Chattanooga game a couple of years ago, and, and how it was a one point game. Obviously, you remember. But how, how, how difficult it could be at times for that team to score. And then this team, like the, the blitzes in Minneapolis, it's just so different. Um, how much of that, if any of it, was 
you feeling like you know, we've got to we've got to be able to go on runs and 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 just score and score to do better you know at the end of the season was, was that a conscious thing yes. that you wanted to turn that up and and I'll, I'll I don't want to make too much out of it with with that team you know Trent had pink eye and we were without Jacob Grandison with the shoulder injury uh, two of those guys those were two big guys that helped initiate offense but um, yeah I, I think the, the the ability to adjust has always been as you move into postseason play has always been something that was a challenge for us and um, as great as Kofi was, there were there were some of those limitations in terms of what we could do at both ends of the court, and he was dominant. But uh, being able to have have versatility, um, multiple guys do multiple things, uh, score the basketball from a lot of different ways. Um, I think we proved that this weekend we could do that. So we'll see. I, I you know it, it seemed to it seemed to be pretty good for a lot of teams in, in postseason play. Um, you two, two, three years ago, or whatever it was, the I.O. Kofi team, that was a one seed. You know, you just look at the, the regular season or the seeding, and you'd think that that was your best Illinois team. Um, but the way this team can erupt, is this team better equipped for, for the tournament even? You know, or is this sort of the maybe your, your team with the best shot, do you feel like, going in? We're getting ready to find out. I like this team. I like this team. I, I do, and I, for a lot of different reasons other than that. I, I, I just think we're a, um, there's there's a lot of uh, versatility with this group. Our bench is productive. We don't win the Big Ten term without Dane. Um, you know, I thought we were. Um, you know, Luke Goody's healthy now. I, I, I just think we have a lot of um, uh, ability to do different things, which we didn't then. Now that team was great. He's got two All-Americans there, uh, just chose to have a bad day and had a bad day. But, again, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I like where this group's going, though. So when was the last time you saw a best deal guarantee? You mean a promise that actually held up? Right. That some unknown online entity didn't want you to log in and download a code and then re-verify as you join some club? Drives you nuts, I know. And then once you purchase that set of steak knives... Well, Dick Van Dyke Appliance World is a lot simpler. You find a verified great deal and they beat it. Just show them the deal you saw. A newspaper clipping or the online cart price will do, and then you're good. At Dick Van Dyke Appliance World, it's one of those instances where you see a best deal guarantee and... You get the best deal. This is Dennis Rekin, chairman of Dick Van Dyke Appliance World. Our exclusive 10-year protection plan comes free with most appliance purchases. Whether it's a GE, Whirlpool, Frigidaire, Bosch, or any of our 30 brands, I guarantee we will beat any competitor's deal. Wow! Illini Pizza fans, great things come from Jets Pizza. Detroit-style pizza is one of them. Freshly made dough, pressed into steel pans inspired by the Motor City. Topped with premium mozzarella, Mama Jets secret sauce, fresh toppings, then baked to the thickest, crispiest, cheesy crunch. Want Detroit-style proof? Order Jets' famous eight-corner pizza. It's eight pieces of crispy, crunchy, and cheesy to the edge pizza. Right now, get $5 off an eight-corner pizza at regular menu price. Online code 8SAVE. Jets Pizza. Up. Better because it has to be. Hi, this is Steve from Good Vibe. And I'm Luke Goody from your men's basketball team. Steve, I have a question. Shoot! We've talked about Sony, but I know you have LG and Samsung too. Aren't they all kind of the same? Ah, that's a tough one. Samsung is famous for their bright, colorful picture and the frame TV. They look like art, right? What about LG? Okay, Sony invented OLED, but LG perfected OLED manufacturing. That efficiency makes LG the number one selling OLED TV in the country, and their build quality is excellent. Yeah, they're really flat too. So, why Sony? Sony makes movies, cameras, monitors. Accurate image is crucial. Colors, skin tones, contrast, motion handling are just some of what Sony does better. Sony buys panels from Samsung and LG and improves them with their own video processing. Wait, a Sony might have an LG screen? Yeah, or even Samsung. You've heard how a great coach can take your team and beat his? I get it. Sony can use other guys' parts and still make a winning product? All to get that red hair just the right shade and no blur on the swish. 
Carpet Weavers Flooring and Furniture Gallery has store-wide savings as they celebrate their anniversary. Installation is half off Mohawk Waterproof Luxury Vinyl Floors. The installation is free on Mohawk Carpet. And get up to $1,000 of instant rebates on Mohawk Carpet and Floors. Instant rebates on all furniture. Plus, buy it all with two years free financing. Don't miss the anniversary sale going on now at Carpet Weavers. And now, Kelsey Briggs, owner of Salon 105 in Muhammad. We're trying to bring something big to a small area and bring luxury into our small community. It is definitely a dream come true. I knew from a young age that I always wanted to do hair and own a salon, which is why I got a business degree and it has led me here. And the growth has just been so much faster than I anticipated, but it's been amazing. One thing that really sets us apart as a salon is our team. We have such an amazing atmosphere. Everyone is so respectful to each other and it's, it's pretty essentially a drama-free zone. Um, we do a lot of team building and hang out with each other outside of work so that we can get to know each other on a personal base, which makes our environment very welcoming to anyone who comes in. Salon 105, providing friendly, personalized service through a terrific, highly skilled team. To book your appointment, visit salon-105.com. That's salon-105.com. You've heard about the doggy bag, right? From Bulldog Disposal Muhammad, a six cubic yard canvas bag that can be used for easy cleanup instead of a big dumpster. The one-time use bag is now available and you can save the delivery charge. Get the doggy bag at Do It Best Hardware in Champaign at 107 West Springfield. So fill up the bag, call Bulldog Disposal, have it disposed of, and you'll be organized. Go to bulldoggybag.com for all the details. That's bulldoggybag.com. It is the drive ESPN 93.5. Lante has left the building. He is out catching some baseball over in Urbana, but luckily I get to turn to the Tapman's Towing phone line where Derek Piper is live from Omaha. Pipes, how you doing? Based on your Twitter feed from last night, you got quite the setup out there. Did you get any sleep last night or were you up firing up the arcade machines? <laughs> First of all, what's up, Kyle? Uh, our, our, a young man's growing up, man. You're leading it in through the uh, the break and everything. Yeah, I'm proud of you, uh, first and foremost. Appreciate but, it. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a fun time uh, here in Omaha. We got in yesterday evening after about a seven seven and a half hour drive. Uh, Cored something for WCIA, and then yeah, we kind of just hung out at the place. And yeah, they've got they got ski ball down there. They got Mortal Kombat. They got uh, an old Nintendo that messed around on some Super Mario and, and Tech Mobile and, and games that are, are way too old for, for Kyle's uh, generation. And I, I had never even played Tech Mobile before. Um, I need to learn because I threw eight interceptions oh, in a boy. game that, that looked like a Big Ten West battle between me and Joey Wagner. He beat me 10-0, to zero, but uh, we did have our fun. And then, yeah, I, I got to sleep and uh, I in case my wife's listening to this, not too much, but uh, I did enjoy a night uh, without any diaper changes or anything like that. So uh, I'm I'm rested up as much as I can be this time of year and uh, ready for some basketball tomorrow for sure. Awesome. Well, set the scene for us in Omaha there. I know you got a chance to head over to the stadium today, talk to Brad Underwood, talk to some players. We played some of that earlier on on our show. Also had open practice that I assume you were able to catch. So uh, – mm-hmm. How's that been so far out there in Omaha? What are the vibes like with this Illinois team a day before they tip it off tomorrow? And anything stand out from what you were able to see over there today? Yeah, yeah, we're still spotted up over here at the CHI Health Center here in Omaha. And uh, like you said, vibes are good. I know that my uh, my coworker and uh, buddy Jeremy Warner just wrote a story about that actually today. Of course, last year uh, I. <laughs> 
I kind of coined the phrase, uh, the vibes are off, and they were. And uh, th- This year, they're, they're very much on. Um, they're, this is a team that is, is feeling very good, and uh, that's just kind of the, the overall thing that I notice about this squad is uh, I feel like they're saying the right things. They're giving off the right vibes. Uh, in, in terms of seeing the shoot-around today, I mean, it, it, it's pretty basic stuff. It, it's nothing that you're going to maybe – gauge a whole lot from but i will say Terrence shannon but was burying three after three and they're shooting drill and uh it is a good sign for a guy that comes in probably is the, the hottest player in the country right now if you look at his his scoring output so that's certainly good i think just all in all the team looks focused but also uh not tight i think that they're uh, as far as we can tell i mean obviously it'll be a different level of stakes and uh when the, when the lights are on and the the, there's actual time on the clock tomorrow. We'll see if they're if they're relaxed enough. Kind of a balance between obviously being laser focused and intense, but also um, not overly tight and pressing. But uh, today they they seemed in their comfort zone. I know we walked in the locker room for some player interviews and Sincere Harris and Dane Danger, and they're playing Uno. And, and Brad was actually in on that before he got called to the to the uh, the podium to talk to the media, which. Uh, Brad did get the best. <laughs> He'd probably want me to say this. He got the the best of of those guys and uh, made sure to do a little dance and and, and talk some trash in the locker room to, to them before he made his way out. So um, vibes are good out of that the squad. I think there's there's an understanding of the pressure uh, and, and talking to some other people just kind of around this team that there's you can kind of just get the sense. I'm saying they they went to me like, man, you know, we got to win and we know what the fans are saying, all this kind of stuff. But uh, you know, there's this time of year, especially, there's for the staff. There's there's long nights, uh, even sleepless nights, and, and trying to make sure you got every base covered and, and watching all the film and, and getting the prep done. So um, it's it's a great time of year. It's a fun time of year, especially for the fans. And uh, the, the Atlanta are hoping that it's it's got some more weeks to it here, and, and you got to get it done here with, with uh, Morehead State tomorrow, and then the winner of BYU and, and Duquesne if if you do advance. So. Um, yeah, today's just that last real step until we get here tomorrow, and uh, it's on from there. Well, speaking of Moorhead State, I'm sure you've had a chance by now to dive into them a little bit deeper here. We had uh, Chuck Mraz, their play-by-play uh, announcer, on at 3.30, and he shared some insight. But what have you seen in watching a little Moorhead State, diving into their numbers a little bit? What concerns you the most about this matchup where could this maybe get a little more dicey than illinois fans would want tomorrow yeah i think it's a decent team uh especially uh, i went and watched that whole game at indiana where that's really one they should have won you know they were up 15 with nine minutes to go and uh, were led by one of their guards and, and jordan latham is a grad transfer uh from milwaukee at 30 points in that game and it was really just making some tough shots and uh they they have the ability to have guards that, that can make threes, and uh, they, they're really surrounding the OVC Player of the Year and, and Riley Menix, who's an NAIA transfer, and he comes in as a 6'7", 230-pound uh, forward that's pretty skilled offensively. Uh, we were kicking this around yesterday on the drive over. He reminds me a little bit of like a, a little bit shorter Joey Hauser. I think he's got some... Uh, he likes to play some booty ball, so he's got some Marcus Dimash in terms of play style with him. Uh, and then they put they put some guards that can shoot it around him. So uh, you look at the metrics, and it's a team that, that plays a slow pace. I think that's one thing that, as you look at it, if you're trying to play from behind, if you have a slow start, they'll try to make you pound the air out of the ball, really work the shot clock, and, and be very slow and methodical offensively. Uh, of course, that then test your, your discipline on defense to make sure that you're you're not falling asleep you're not you're, you're able to, to compete throughout the the course of, an, of a possession and not give up a quality look so uh, I think for Illinois it's important to kind of put the pressure on them early versus vice versa uh, that's kind of the way I look at it um, Menix I think in terms of the matchups Quincy Garrier to me I think that makes a lot of sense because they, they start a seven footer and, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe you put Quincy on that guy and, and Coleman on Minix. And, uh, but as they kind of get in their rotations, then the seven-footer will, will sub out and they'll play some small ball, essentially with Minix at the five. So uh, I think Brad's got some decisions, uh, as he usually does, with, with versatility and, and matchups. But 
uh, whether they want to put Quincy on him, uh, whether they want to put Coleman on him. And uh, then on the uh, on the perimeter, you got to be able to make sure that some of those guards don't get going. So um, they got blown out in games at Purdue, at Penn State, at Alabama. So this is really one that Illinois should win. But, yeah, and, and watching their Indiana game in particular, and then I went back and watched their – OVC final against Little Rock. It's it's a solid team and one that Illinois will have to, to play well and and definitely be up for the game. I, I think that's another thing that we kind of we, we can't really fully judge yet, but it's one thing that definitely comes to mind, especially as the recent track record comes up with the Big Ten tournament champions and you think about them playing late into the afternoon on Sunday and playing one of the earlier games on Thursday is is there that hangover? Is there a situation where they haven't fully turned the page? I know they said that they did, and uh, in talking to some people around here today, that they, they mentioned you know uh, getting to to sit back and watch the selection show this time versus you know being still out on the court celebrating. It allows them to, to kind of refocus a little bit. They go home, they have an off day, and then they really dive back into uh, what's next. So. Uh, they think that this is different than, of course, being in the COVID bubble and and, and having some of that back in, in 21. But uh, we'll really understand what that mental approach looks like when uh, it, it's early in the game tomorrow, and uh, they're going to need they're going to need that intensity and to take this team seriously because the Indiana game in Bloomington is an example of what can happen if Illinois isn't on and, and is kind of messing around with a team that could be bound to pull an upset if, if you are uh, in that situation. I want to ask you about Dane Danger specifically because we didn't really get a chance to dive into kind of the specific games from over the weekend on Monday with you, but it feels like Dane really kind of had his breakout finally at the Big Ten tournament where he has that 18.8 rebound game where you really needed it against Ohio State. I think he played 23 minutes on Sunday, helped you win a Big Ten championship is that a guy that you think could factor more into this rotation heading into the NCAA tournament coming off what he was able to do in Minneapolis over the weekend? You, you look at this Moorhead State team, and they look pretty thin in the front court. I know they start a seven-footer who was a Xavier transfer at one point, but it seems like a matchup, especially we kind of joke about sometimes how Dane really, when he sees a mid-major, he he's had some of his best games. So is Dane a guy that you think – can really start to factor in a little bit more for this Illinois team as they look to make a run here in the tournament? Yeah, no, I think that's a good point as far as what he's done against some of these low to mid-major teams and could be a situation where you try to put fouls on, on Riley Bennett if he's playing the five and, and see how that goes. Of course, there is kind of the, the give and take of if Minix is their five man, then, then Dane's got to be able to go out and guard him. I was Encouraged, though, in the minutes that, that Dane was matched up with Stephen Crowell, who, uh, on the whole, in the Big Ten tournament, shot the three pretty decently. Uh, that, that Dane wasn't really wasn't giving up too many, you know, wide open jumpers. That his activity defensively has really improved. So, uh, but definitely, as far as the the glass is concerned, and, and we know that throwing it inside to him can be a, an avenue for offense, uh, and as long as he just doesn't get loose with the ball or, or try to be a little too too fancy with it. One of the things I really liked and hearing him talk after the Ohio State game was like, hey, I, I saw when we battled them in Columbus, I, I was a little too finesse and just didn't take it into the chest of Akpara, who's one of the better shot blockers in the Big Ten. Uh, of course, getting that opportunity uh, there in Minneapolis against them, that's what that's what Dane did. He, he went right through him. He had four and ones in that second half and, and just, just playing with a lot of confidence and, and, and a good amount of energy and engagement. So uh, I do think that he can be one of those players that helps push you uh, another round or another uh, another weekend as far as the tournament goes. Uh, I, I even think as you look at the Baylor match or as you look at the, the BYU matchup, uh, getting a look at them and some of their shoot around, I, I noticed in watching some of their film on the drive over here, I mean, their bigs look like offensive linemen. Like the, uh, Ali Khalifa, who's a seven footer and around 300 pounds, looks like he plays offensive tackle. And then their the other guy looks like a guard. Uh, that not being, of course, the uh, the guard in the back or guard on the on the line. So uh, you could have a, a matchup there where you need to 
have a, a banger uh, inside against those type of guys. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk here in a second maybe about just BYU and, and obviously the way they shoot the three and everything. But, yeah, I like Illinois' ability. I mean, it really, Kyle, and throwing it back to you, it's like it's one of the things we really thought about at the beginning of the year is you know Brad's ability to, to lean on different guys, to play different lineups and um, – the way Dane's playing right now gives him that flexibility of playing bigger if he wants to, if, if Coleman's in foul trouble or uh, is emotionally <laughs> out of a game or whatnot. Uh, you can you can go in that direction. So uh, I like what Dane's giving you there. I like what Luke's giving you off the bench too. And uh, that those are those are positives as you go into win or go home home mode that you got those guys uh, in a good recent form. Yeah, let, let's talk a little about BYU, not to look ahead too far, but it sounds like you have dove into them a little bit as well. What does that matchup look like? I, I think it is interesting, Lana and I kind of talked about it. Both these teams really that Illinois drew, Moorhead State and BYU, are teams that really rely on three-point shooting. And you, mm-hmm. you look at Illinois on paper, and, and we talk about it a lot, about how this defense is designed to really force you more into the mid range and run you off the three point line. Do you like how that matchup could shape up for Illinois? I know it's a lot, been a lot of angst throughout social media and whatnot about how, well, how did we get a five seed? Of course, Illinois would get the one time that for whatever reason, a five seed has to drop to a six seed, but matchup wise against BYU, should Illinois take care of Moorhead state on Thursday? Do you think that's one where Illinois should feel pretty good about how they match up with that BYU offense, especially? I do like the fact that one of the key characteristics of Brad's defense is taking away the three. And of course that's, like you said, and it's what the metrics say is is how BYU wants to get their points. I mean, it's crazy the rate of three pointers that they rattle off. I mean, they play with a fast tempo, so they're already going to play high possession games. But they shoot about fifty one percent of their field goals are from downtown. Which I was looking up today. There's only been two other high major teams the last twenty years that have done that. It was wow. West Virginia in like two thousand six and. Villanova in 2019, so it's really rare territory for a team that's now, uh, BYU, of course, coming from the Mountain West, now being in the Big 12, to be in a major conference and just shoot that much from the perimeter, but uh, they've got a lot of a lot of capable shooters. They're, they're going to run a lot of actions to get their guys freed up. they got uh, screening actions that they run, pin downs, uh, flares, screen for the screener stuff that uh, Illinois is really, if they draw that matchup, going to have to be dialed in and not get hung up on screens and not have mis- miscommunications. Uh, I, I do like that Illinois, as far as some of their their comparable matchups, I would say. I mean, like Iowa isn't a team that shoots three as much as they usually do, um, you know, traditionally as far as this year goes. But, you know, Peyton Sanford runs off screens and Josh Dix as well, and they did, they did pretty well. They did pretty well against Iowa in that sense, and Nebraska was another game where we know that Tomonaga is a guy that can really go off, and of course he did against Illinois and Champaign. So uh, another thing in watching BYU, uh, it, it's one of those, even if you do a pretty good job on them uh, in terms of positioning, they're going to have their night. You just hope that it's not uh, one of those against you, or mm-hmm. you know, they, hit, they hit 13 threes in their wins against Kansas, and and, and Iowa State, and maybe it was 14 in their win against Baylor. So uh, those are the things you really want to avoid. You want to make them uncomfortable. Uh, as far as their defense goes, like they don't have a lot of athleticism, especially on the perimeter. So I think that parents could really kill them, and, and even Marcus. Uh, and I think physicality-wise, the only way can impose their will on them as well. And uh, another thought, as I was watching, they got kind of run off the floor against Texas Tech, and one thing that uh, really stood out in, in that one. Um, that's their last game in the Big 12 tournament. They lost by double digits and really were down 20 most of that game. When they miss threes, they're susceptible to giving out runouts and transition, and uh, that's something that could really put Illinois in a, a position of strength. If, if they're getting stops and then get, if they're forcing misses from three, getting rebounds and then running, BYU could have a hell of a time uh, with Illinois. Uh, of course, it's a different conversation if they're making their threes, but um, – yeah, I, it is funny, Kyle. Uh, I know we only have a minute or so left, but 
it's funny to look at the net rankings and see BYU a spot ahead of Illinois and be like, oh boy. Um, what do you make of that? I just hope we're not having this conversation uh, because I'm not saying it was, it's it's too much of an excuse. It gets fair to bring up Loyola was in the top ten of Ken Palm uh, as a nine. Houston was in the top ten of Ken Palm as a five. Let's just let's just not do that, right? <laughs> let's just mm-hmm. have Illinois if they do face them, take care of business and uh, not have to to lean back on it. Oh, of course Illinois fill in the blank, right? Oh, I'm totally with you, and and that is going to be the conversation. If Illinois loses to BYU, that will be the conversation. We'll be having it again the next time they're in the tournament. But I was telling Lon earlier this hour, like, Illinois is just a better basketball team than BYU. I can understand it a little bit more, like, against Houston a couple years ago where you were a four seed and you're paired with a five seed that's all of a sudden, oh, they're better than you and favored by four points. Illinois mm-hmm. should beat this BYU team, and I'm, I'm not here to make any excuses. I think in the first weekend, this sets up pretty nicely for Illinois. But uh, I, real quick, I'm, I'm the one to blame for making us late today, so it's all right. But keep it quick <laughs> if you can. Me and Lon went yep. through our bracket predictions yesterday, and our brackets were eerily similar. I'm not sure how to feel about that, but I'm sure you've had a time to at least look through a bracket a little bit here. Give us mm-hmm. any highlights national title pick and of course how far do you ultimately have this 